Okay, welcome to our latest video for, on our YouTube channel, and this time we're looking at tips we can give you when buying a second hand Laser 2000 or renamed the LDC RS 2000. Why are we doing this? We've had 25 years experience now in, of a full time uh, dinghy repair specialist, and in that time we have fixed probably over 200 2000s. So we've actually seen most things that can go wrong with a 2000. We've also bought and sold quite a high number of 2000s, and again, we know what to look for. So basically trying to pass on these tips to you to help you be able to easily get into the class and get a good value boat and the right boat for you. The 2000, very good boat. Phil Morrison really knew what he was doing when he was designing this boat. They're also very well built. They're very rugged, very hard wearing, take a lot of punishment. And the good news for all of us is they will last a very long time if looked after remotely properly. So in actual fact, going out and looking at quite an old 2000, you can go out with quite a lot of confidence on that. No problem at all. Um, and you, there's no issue at all about buying a 20, 25 year old 2000 uh, to typically fun to get you into club racing and get your family sailing that's actually an ideal place to actually start. So, as I said, they're an extremely rugged, very well built boat. You can have a lot of confidence in them. The gel coat on them is very, is quite thick and well protected. The glass fire bit of the, of the hull structurally will last an incredibly long time. No problem at all. The first thing to do though, is actually, is actually ascertain what is a good value boat. There is a, actually a fantastic organisation called the 2000 Class Association, run by very keen volunteers, brilliant, brilliant group of people, and their website is a fantastic resource. On, on there um, is actually a, um, a page, very helpful, that tells you by a sail number how, when the boat was actually built and how old it is. And actually the link for that is coming up on the screen underneath me as I talk. And this is the first thing you can actually do. Look at that, actually, so when you see a sail, a boat advertised, you know how old it is. And actually also do quite a bit of research into what the likely value is and what the package is. There's quite a difference in price between the ages of a boat. Uh, obviously the older it is, the, le the less you'd expect to pay for it. Also, be very aware nowadays, second-hand road trailers are worth quite, well, brand new ones are actually 800, 900 pounds second-hand ones are 400 pounds so if a boat comes advertised without a road trailer make sure you that, that you, that's reflected in the price also particularly the quality of the sales in terms of racing um, a brand new super sales for a 2000 is something like 1300 pounds if you want to go racing that actually is quite a quite a considerable cost so again that should be reflected in the price of the boat so the first thing you want to do when going to go into view a boat is actually check it is what was actually advertised and, the, and what you really need to look at is this plate in the back of the cockpit or on the newer boats that RS have actually done a similar thing and engraved on here is the actual number it's very difficult to pick up uh, on this but it's actually etched in and that is that's the crucial the crucial thing doesn't matter what the cell numbers actually say this is the boat number and this is the, the important thing it's like a car registration it gives you a complete guide to the to the uh, ownership and age of the boat on every um 2000 in fact on the majority of, of recently produced dinghies there will be something called the hin number engraved on the back each individual boat has a unique number and as you can see ignore some of the high critics the, the important thing for most most people is the last two digits and that gives you the year that it was actually built. The first thing you might notice about this boat when we actually start looking all over it is is this colour fade area. Very common in days of 2000s. This is actually UV light deterioration. It's actually oxidisation of, 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 of this top surface. It's a cosmetic, it's a pure cosmetic thing. No problem at all. It's not going to do any harm to the boat whatsoever. In fact, the boat could stay like this for another 30 years and not actually see any ill effect. We have actually done another video, a link coming up below, below you now, to actually where we've actually done, restored the colour on, on a boat. It takes a bit of ma manual work and you can completely improve the appearance. It's 90% back to what it was originally. As I said, it's not a big problem. 
just bear in mind if you want it tackled it costs about 250 pounds for somebody like us to actually do it okay so what else do you look for in the boat well let's start at the very front and actually work our way back through through the boat and the first thing that's actually vital to check is actually the pole itself very simple grab the grab the pole launch line and literally pull it out that works smoothly no problem at all have a no quick look down the pole is it straight if it was if it was a bit bent it probably wouldn't come out of that as smoothly but this is this is quite a good one there is no problem with with the front of the pole here again that can be an issue no problem at all the line inside looks actually quite good so i'm quite pleased pleased with that what i would actually suggest doing is just undoing the ropes on the pole so the pole can be completely removed this is actually on a different 2000 now and why i want to do is i want to check this in here and as you can see there is a crack here and that's in what is called the deck to hold joint um, and in actual fact that is that's not great down there and that really needs to be fixed the boat if that continues to actually get worse the boat will end up leaking quite badly and it will be through it will be through there it's also a structural strength thing and as I said that's not a disaster it's easy to it's for a boat repair like I says that's actually quite an easy fix it's not an easy thing for a keen amateur to do so again if you were looking at buying a boat buy it but reflect it in the price of the boat what it's going to cost to actually what it's going to cost to actually fix it so this is where the pole, the pole launch line from your spinnaker halogen would run through here and back so as you pull the spinnaker up it pulls the pole out so what we want to make sure is that when it's when it's fully extend, extended this reaches to this pulley that's brilliant that actually is working quite well so this is this is rigged properly but quite often there, there is actually couldn't be a rigging problem here which is actually just down this understanding by the owner the other really big thing to check is the sock as you can see this is actually quite a well used one it's probably only got a few years life left if if at all you want to check for any rips here if this isn't on position properly because again socks are easy to get obviously they cost money if this is in bad condition it should be reflected in the price of the boat Moving back along the boat, let's look at the, the, sort of the most important structural points of the boat. First off, the shroud U-bolts. Obviously you attach the shrouds to here. In breeze, you put quite a reasonable amount of rig tension on. So in actual fact, these are the vital parts of the, of the boat. Any, what you need to look for here, and this is obviously a perfectly good boat, is I would be very keen to look at, see whether there's any sort of cracking going on around here and on the underside. We'll show you that in a, in a second. Okay, some quite often, the, some of the cracking here can be just restricted to the gel, not too bad. But I would be concerned about that. Again, if, it, if there is, I would want it to come into a boat repairer to be fixed. These are quite prone to actually, to actually bend, um, open, or be distorted again you do not want to see this fit in for the poor crew if these ratchet blocks aren't working properly it's very difficult for them to hold the spinnaker properly so again i would want to check those put a bit of rope in check that they're actually working properly next most important area in the boat is the mast step obviously this would be mast move move them see if you can move this and in this case it's brilliant it's rock solid that's what you want to see but quite, sometimes what you can get is these some of these screw heads can shear and you can get movement if there's movement there and you can't tighten the screws up again that's got to be looked at beforehand again just have a quick look at these pulleys all these are the control line control lines for the kicker and the coming in. this in particular is the vital one that's a that's where the spinnaker and it runs through and again poor crew is going to have a lot of problems hoisting the kite if this isn't operating properly so just run the sheath just make sure it's moving properly back of the sock is it attached down properly in this case it is they're very prone to getting cut lines in here where you're trying to pull the spinnaker down and it's not coming and you end up cutting them cutting them there again it's not too big a problem in fact quite a lot of sail repairers can actually re do repairs on those but again it might look it might be replace the whole sock so now we're, we're into the cruise area of the boat. 
one of the usual problems with, with these is the toe shack's not being supported because the shock cord's gone. That's an easy fix. If the, if the toe shacks are lying on the floor, not a big issue, but I would definitely want to get them sorted. It's quite easy with the shock cord. I, would, I want to have a good look at the centre board. This is a really good one because there's no movement or play in that at all. It's also good that you can see there's no there's no grooves in, in there. That's really great. What I would really encourage everybody to look at is move the ropes and just check along here. Is there any cracking in there? If there is, again, it's something that we really want to get fixed before you go too much further. The 2000s are really well built, really rugged and strong. So we, um, unlike RS 200s and RS 400s, which do get a fair bit of gel cracking in the cockpits, these don't, but equally that's why we would, would have a good look around. Any cracking in the cockpit floor is a bad idea, or up on up on here. The floor is a separate piece, it's an add-on piece afterwards, and they're very they are quite prone to getting cracked, particularly on these back edges, mainly because people stand on them when getting in and out of the boat. Um, and then again it's not too bad a fix for us, for us guys it is for the keen amateur and eventually if, it, if it's really cracked at the back here they will carry on and eventually this thing will start to bow it's quite easy to take it out by taking all these fittings off but if it if it's an issue there i want to get it i would want to get it tackled the other some we see this occasionally it's not very frequent in 2000s which is very good news for us all is particularly where the helm can sit not that i'm suggesting the helms are fat and, and uh, heavy but they can land a bit heavily at times but the you can get some cracking down the center of the, of the side deck here um, it's not that common in 2000s but again if you see cracking in this area i would want to get it see looked at there's a bit of a difference between slight slight hairline cracks in the gel coat which are just in the gel and you can very easily tell you can literally press down with all your weight and if you can't make it move then it's just in the gel and it's not too bad but that's an area to look at you would obviously very common you would get a lot of small dings and little knocks in the gunnel in the gunnel edge very common it's just it's just a practical thing of sailing particularly where you're coming into jetties this will get knocked and again this is actually by and large 90 percent of these will just be small scale little gel knocks which are more are, are purely cosmetic now we're at the transom at the back of the boat. What can happen here? Well, let's look at the rudder fittings. These need to be really secure, no movement in them whatsoever. So actually really just grab hold of them, move them. And if these are brilliant, no movement there whatsoever. Really good. If there is, undo this hatch and have a look in the back here and have a look at the back of the, of the bolts. Luckily, they're very accessible. Um, it might be just a question of they just need tightening up with a spanner on the back okay if that's not the case then in actual fact you might have to take these bolts completely out and look at the look at the holes they might need refilling and re-drilling have a look at, at if there's a cracking coming out from around here i would actually that's a slight concern for me um because that would imply movement and uh and i would want to have a look at look at that which again could involve taking that fitting actually off the other thing that can wear is these bushes in here and i would actually try the complete rud on i don't want to see movement in there these bushes can be replaced it's not tricky deck to hold joint here very important area i'm looking to see if there's any cracking in in here at all can be caused by by a boat to boat collision guy as you go around the mark gets it wrong and rams you off the transom other very common things on the shore as you're taking the boat off the road trader you ground the boat um, and why is that important it's a structural matter deck to hold joint it's literally holding the two parts together but particularly on the transom here it's a very common area if they're cracked to get leaking into the inside the boat which is not clever but again for us as a boat repairer, that's actually a very easy repair. Not necessarily easy for um, a keen amateur to try themselves. We've got a, a different 2000, we've got it turned over. Um, and just to have a quick inspection of the bottom of the boat, the really 
an area that they're very prone to damage is the skeg here and that is actually as i said taking it off the road trailer you ground it or you pull it out boat out of the water uh, you grind it on the slipway or when you're launching which again is a really bad area most people don't get the boats deep enough when they launch the boat to float them off and they actually lift them off and it grounds off this we've actually repaired this one it's an easy repair but they can be really flattened off here just have a quick look along here the other really crucial area, area to look at is your centerboard okay this is your slot gasket it's a sailcloth slot gasket it should close back in on itself when the centerboard isn't there. And why that's a bit important is because when you're doing any sort of speed, if that's if this this isn't actually closing in on itself, it will let a lot of water into the centerboard case, which is going to be very slow, but it will also sp could actually then spread up into your inside your boat. So in actual fact on this one, I would want this to be replaced. It's very easy, it's unscrew all these uh, this keel band, put a new one on. But it's about a 40 minute job to do it. This is what I also is worth turning the boat over, at least putting it on its side, is I'm keen to actually find this sort of damage uh, here, right on the chine. I would, it, it's not bad damage and it's actually quite easy for us to sort out. It will probably need some glass fiber in, but that's, that's a good area to spot. Spot with, and it's, it is a quite a common thing on, on 2000s. The other thing we would look for is on the uh, cradles where it, where it sits you can get a lot of osmosis um, which is bubbles appearing and if they're really big they will eventually burst again it's not a big issue in terms of in terms of longevity of the hull it's just something you don't particularly want to see i mentioned early on about cracking around the shroud u-bolt this is the underside of that of that so it's got a backing plate to spread the load if you see cracking along here on either side that's actually a real issue um, and I would probably actually turn around to the to the, the owner of the boat and actually say yeah I'll be interested in buying your boat once that is fit once that is repaired properly either that or he knocks quite a lot of money off, off the off the price of the boat but this is structural and is is something that's actually of, of real importance very common situation in 2000s they're very prone to is having not chunks knocked off this real bow area or along here and actually that is quite often caused by us launching and landing, grounding the boat uh, or it coming into a jetty, which is really not a clever idea. Not a big issue, they've got really thick gel on there. So if there is a knock, knock out, you can actually get it sorted.